Hello and welcome to We Women Want. This is our weekly show where we discuss women's issues. We try and find solutions. We talk to experts. We talk to stakeholders. We talk to those who are actually going through the issues, going through problems, and try and find a solution. This is becoming a must with this show for all. In fact, not just for women, but for men also. Well, today we're going to be tackling an issue that uh, should be of concern to some of us that we haven't taken cognizance of so far. We're talking about prenups. That is a, a contract between a husband and wife before entering into a marriage. Should they all also go get into a contract a legal contract and divide their assets because as you know during divorce the division of assets division of children's uh, you know rights over children all these issues become a big uh, what do you call stalling point in the divorce but at the time of marriage should we be actually thinking about breakups and divorce well that's another issue that's going to be you know that's a big hurdle in the way of prenups but joining me on the show today i have with me a panel of lawyers i have payal chavla she is the founder of just contractors uh, manali single she is a lawyer in the supreme court and alkanj chidhar she is a managing partner at the law offices of india alkanj actually this is a conversation that came about uh, the topic came out the conversation between the two of us and so just explain to us what is the status in india you know legally are prenups valid are they not prenups in india are not valid as of now but i do see and i am definite about it that in the new uh, future it will happen but as of now they are not but having said that i have worked for a lot of uh, clients who in spite of knowing that they are not enforceable are willing to get into a kind of an agreement prenup that is before the marriage to mm. kind of decide that what happens in case something happens to the marriage but there's a lot of resistance on this part which i think is kind of something to do with us thinking that marriages are sacred etc etc so you can't get into a marriage with the prenup hanging over your head saying that you know now we think there's a possibility that something might go wrong to that what i say is it's like buying a new car right you don't take the car out of the showroom thinking i'm going to have an accident but you do take an insurance policy on it so what i think is it's something that one needs to do and one should do because we have also seen from our varying experiences that uh the family court proceedings can be very tedious and very long and it's not only the two husband and the wife because they are adults and they can kind of deal with it but it's the children who are at a vulnerable age and they are the one who suffer a lot so i greatly recommend that prenups should be made and it's not only the prenups now even after getting married we have something called post nuptial agreements so even after you're married yeah. and you think that yeah. you know we need to get into it you sit down and you kind of ring fence the marital properties and the non-marital properties so everybody knows where they stand so it's not a bad thing to do contrary to what the public opinion now seems to be especially among the older generation the parents hmm. but the new generation a lot of them are now opting for it they are opting for it they are but uh, manali first your take on prenups you know they are not legally binding but still people are opting for it so can then they be uh, will this hold in the court So there have been instances where people have produced prenups in court and the court has of course said that the prenups are not uh, recognized by Indian courts but there have been cases where they've been used as evidence to have evidentiary value to the intent of what the parties had in mm. mind so very often they are only to you know say that okay before marriage this is what they wanted uh, to uh, you know parties uh this is how they saw going forward if there was ever a dispute how their assets would be divided or whatever mm -hmm. they may decide on but there is a problem with according to me in this whole uh, whole argument while i am not opposed to prenups but i think in india we need to be very very cautious and careful about prenups first of all a in india people are you know uh so uh, eager to get their daughters and all married that you can have a situation where someone uh, you know will agree to almost anything mm. as long as they are getting married mm. so it should not happen that way secondly on the point of for example today deciding or even before marriage or even before having children deciding on custody issues or uh, things like that that would be opposed according to me uh, to the law of the land and even to uh, public uh, policy for the simple reason that court has always held that in uh, cases of custody etc 
it's the welfare of the child which is paramount. Hmm. So they are not really going to go even at a later stage, even if there is an agreement, the court at that point, I think, would only be concerned with the interest, best interest of the child hmm. and would decide a matter accordingly. Hmm. So in that background, I think it's not a bad idea because what is happening is a lot of people, especially, you know, unlike uh, uh, earlier, firstly, now uh, young people are deciding choosing their own spouses. Hmm. And earlier, yeah. there used to be only arranged marriages. When there were arranged marriages, people used to, you know, only find people amongst their own social sort of... Uh, and economic levels. And economic yeah. levels. Hmm. So people do feel that uh, there should be uh, some sort of safeguard. I think what has been happening also, and that it's good that it has happened, that the law has been evolving to protect and provide more for women hmm. who had nothing really getting earlier. But now we have to also balance. It shouldn't happen that the law in the one hand is trying to give women who after or at a time of a divorce or separation are left high and dry, hmm. are left high and dry because they have entered into a prenup. So I think of, it's a very tricky thing and we have to find that fine balance, uh, you know, to see that these prenups are actually A, uh, fair, B, that they will withstand the test of court. Okay, fair enough. Pail, first your takes on uh, whether a prenup is a good or bad thing. And also, uh, Manali mentioned the woman being left high and dry. So, does the woman always be the benefactor or sometimes the prenups can work for men as opposed to in favor of My take would be, I think I'm in favor of prenups. Hmm. And, you know, as somebody who drafts a lot of commercial contracts, you have something called representation and warranties. Huh. So, parties have to represent their financial status. And when people are getting married, you'll see there's always this thing to puff your financial status. <laughs> but when you're coming to a divorce, everyone's pleading poverty. Yeah, so, uh, uh, you know, if you have a contract and I'm, I believe that this uh, prenups can lead to conversations. Mm. These are difficult conversations, but financial conversations are going to happen, whether they happen pre the marriage or post the marriage hmm. and it's better to have those difficult conversations it's going to give you a lay of the land and then you know which way are you headed are these people comfortable are they not comfortable and if you're then getting into a territory which is gray then and you believe that marriages are made in heaven then well heavens help you <laughs> <laughs> okay and so, my uh, second question about the men uh, can men also gain from a prenup of course, I mean, if you are the party, it's like any other contract, the pa the party that has more power and the party that is more desperate, that's the same sort of thing that was Manali was alluding to. Mm. And which is why, uh, and I, I'm not trying to promote lawyers, but, you know, this is where lawyers come in because you'll do your best to protect the client's interest and that's when the conversation can get very difficult and force clients to get into territories that they normally would be diffident to uh, discuss, discuss with their partners or okay. potential partners. Huh. No, and there and is I, some hesitation, I think, because, you know, especially in Indian context, it may probably happens even abroad that do you not trust me that you want a prenup? Yeah, it's that, a, that, you know, that question always pops up and hmm. you will find, I mean, uh, the few uh, prenups that I have worked on, this, this, this actually does also sometimes uh, come up if one party is asking for a prenup and it is not a mutual sort of decision to have it. Hmm. But, going but which is the main party that asks for a prenup? Is the party that is economically better off that uh, uh, wants a prenup? See, because I have advised under UK uh, jurisdiction too on prenups where it's enforceable and that too it just became enforceable with White and White and Miller just very recently. Your both concerns are absolutely on dot. Hmm. But you see, a prenup has to be, first of all, like she rightly said, you know, one person can be pressurized. So there are certain inherent safeguards we put in the prenups. For example, in UK, for a prenup to be enforceable, you have to sign it not later than 28 days. So 28 days prior to the marriage. So it's like not at the last date, you know, you say now you need to sign it because the marriage is tomorrow. Yeah. So 28 days or a month, you know, so there's plenty of time for both the parties to sit down and think about it. 
Secondly, full financial disclosure is a must. You have to have the properties non-marital marital. If there's no full disclosure, that prenup itself will be invalid. But uh, inherited properties are part of the marital. No, 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 no. no. It should be the, mar the, the, ma the marital. And are. also the non-marital. I mean, for example, there was this bill of the UPA, which was which said that, which of course has not been passed for obvious reasons. They were saying in case of a divorce, even the ancestral property will be divided into half. Hmm. So that was stretching it to bit too far in my opinion and that's why rightly so it's never seen the you light know of the yeah. light of the day right so going forward and this also it's very important to have a review clause in the prenup okay. now what does the review clause hmm. do review clause is when there are certain trigger events something like a birth of a child of when one of the spouses gets seriously ill so then you can sit down and both the parties can sit down and change it you know, so it's fair to both the parties. So there are a lot of safeguards that we can put in the prenup. You know, full financial disclosure, review, uh, you know, uh, clauses. Mm -hmm. Also, there have been certain cases. It's all very interesting and it's so, it's so new in India. Yeah. So that's why we all have these gray areas. There was a case, I, it's, I think Cooper, John versus John, again in UK, mm -hmm. in which there was division of property between the husband and the wife. Now, what the court said was interestingly that, you know, uh, you know, there's been a lot of cases in UK, shop and shop and all that, which basically said in majority of the cases, mm -hmm. it gets divided into half and half, keeping the yardstick of equality in mind, which is basically needs to be equal and fair to both parties. Mm -hmm. But in this case, they said that the husband, being the genius that he was, it was entirely due to his uh, financial genius that he was able to create this wealth. So it should not then be divided half and half, which mm -hmm. is, I think, fair enough because it was the husband. It was the husband mm -hmm. who had basically contributed and created this wealth. So why mm -hmm. should it then be divided half and half? So these kind of inherent safeguards can be put in the prenups and they can so, always then uh, review you know, it I mean, later on. I don't know the facts, all the facts yes. of this case, but yeah. they may not be... Uh, 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 completely fair always because I think we have a, a recent Madras High Court judgment yes. which says that a homemaker or was it Kerala yeah. that, that it was that Madras High Court yes. yes that a homemaker should get half of uh, uh, the, the husband's, husband's earnings because yeah. she has contributed equally so just because he ha a husband has been out and able to Work. create uh, wealth the fact is that he's been able to do that because the wife is taking care of the children, the home, everything, hmm. and he can concentrate on his. But in uh, this case, yes. Uh, but in this case, I think the husband was somewhere in UAE or something. He was or not in India, and it was the wife who was taking care of all the properties. And the judge said, "I think it's amazing." This is what can be avoided. Huh? This is exactly what can be avoided by a prenup. Exactly. Because if you <laughs> want to ring fence a person, let. Hypothetically, let's take Jeff Bezos' example. Hmm. Yes. You want to ring fence his company. The, in this sort of thing, you will be arguing till the cows come home uh, in court. But if you are able to get into either a, pre, a prenup or a postnup, hmm. uh, you will be able to ring fence some assets to say, look, this is entirely his baby, this is entirely her baby. But the marital assets that are created during the pendency of the marriage is what will get split. This is just hypotheticals. Hmm. But if I can just, uh, you know, uh, complicate this conversation Please a little do. bit, which I'm <laughs> dying to I do. I have three lawyers. And I, not because I, because <laughs> that, we have yeah, two lawyers simple? who we can... So, uh, while we keep saying that prenups are not valid, but in a sense aren't... Uh, and this is a question to both of you, and I'm sorry I'm taking no, up please, your... No, please, I'm enjoying this conversation. But, uh, the postnups... Aren't they sort of legal because before you do the first motion, you're doing a separation and so, that's during the pendency of the marriage. So, so postnup is okay. This is prenup, pre which is, which is yeah. even before the marriage. Hmm. So, so, so the thing is that are people going to be on an equal footing before marriage in our social system where, you know, very often, let's take for example, uh, amongst Hindus, Marriage is not a contract. It's, a, you know, supposed to be sacrosanct, etc., etc. But in Muslims, uh, under Muslim uh, law, it's a contract. They have some a concept of even meher, hmm. which gets decided before. And most of the time, you'll see that the meher amount is so small. 
so you know and and uh, in their uh, community uh, divorce is simpler than what it is uh, say for hindus and if we have for example a situation where you are allowing prenups where the prenup will decide in the in the event of a divorce a certain amount which may at that time be just based on you know the fact that they want a marriage to happen may not necessarily not only be fair may not be sufficient to really looking forward look after the needs or take care of the needs of a wife children so many things but the prenup in itself is not a stand alone thing even the prenup to be enforced has to pass through the courts and when it passes through the courts then it becomes incumbent upon the judge to see if that if it's fair if it's not fair keeping in view the facts and circumstances of the case it won't be enforced Correct. it won't be enforced yes. so he will keep in mind that these were the intentions of the party and especially things like custody of a child no uh, agreement on that would be valid that itself exactly. would be not enforceable yes. exactly that won't be valid but pertaining to the properties if the judge thinks that yes there was fraud misrepresentation not full disclosure though prenups should be and are in uk supported by statements of both the parties saying that we have gone and we have read everything i mean full financial disclosure has been there and if for example it's a very interesting and it's a very valid point and if the husband for example which in invariably happens in the family court like you said when they sign they have a lot of properties by the time they come to the divorce this guy is a pauper but during the prenup if he has signed a statement and given the full financial disclosures of his properties then that would be a fraud i mean he could yeah. be questioned for that so, it would be made tighter not okay. uh, i'm going to take a quick break and come back and keep the conversation going so stay with us hello and welcome back to we women want this week we're taking a look at the issue of prenups currently they're not legally valid but we have a panel we're discussing why shouldn't it be legally valid in india the pros and cons of the discussion manali so uh, coming back to uh, what alka was saying yes a court will of course look into whether uh, whether a prenup is fair or not fair and whether it uh, uh, meets the test of uh, uh, public policy etc but you see uh, that's the whole point i mean ultimately everything is going to go to court and in court it's going to take forever even now we have so many laws which are uh, ostensibly there for women uh, you know to get maintenance etc but years and years go on that so you know i mean i don't know what how much we are going to achieve because we don't have a system where for like in uk that all marital ex uh, assets that means assets created uh, during, marriage. during marriage would be divided 50-50 that kind of a concept is not there at all and in india also what happens is there is such a hodgepodge of what is family wealth what is personal wealth everything is just muddled up so and when it comes to uh, issue, uh, you know uh, uh, at the time of divorce and maintenance and all they get even more muddled so it makes this whole thing very complicated i think ultimately it will have to be seen case to case it cannot be we cannot have a ru uh, rule in fact i think recently there was a judge in delhi who uh, has uh, commented only in a judgment saying that uh, you know it should be made compulsory i don't agree uh, yeah. with uh, respectfully don't agree with that uh, because while yes in certain cases it may be uh, you know be easy because if they have already decided now what happens is we are also in modern times where people are marrying and also separating uh, with much more ease than before and uh, you know mutually or something and there need not be then a protracted litigation if they, the have, oh, they already have something uh, you know uh, uh, which kind of spells out that in case there's going to be a divorce this what is, how how are things going to be but my with? question to that would be manali why my question would be how would having a prenup make it more complicated see in any I'm not case i'm saying it saying, makes it more complicated i'm just saying that you can't have a standard format for a prenup or you can't make it a yeah, compulsory yeah, yeah. keep yeah that yeah. of course it will See, have to be uh, exactly. case to case and obviously we have to be very careful that 
in a country like India, where people, uh, you know, women are slightly still disadvantaged. Yes. They don't have, and even from their own family background, there will be always, a, a, you know, there pressure. will be more pressure to sign something, get married, you know, therefore you have to just be a little cautious because you don't want a situation that you have laws and, you know, the legislature is trying to give you laws which will protect your rights and then parties are allowed to sign agreements giving up those rights. That may not, uh, you know, uh, result in a very fair... Uh, but my question is, if this uh, prenup has to be then scrutinized by the courts uh, to make it valid or whatever, then why go through it if it's not a binding law? Because then, for the simple reason, because it clarifies ah. the position of the parties, which the court in the other cases and in, in other instances will take years and years for them to agree on. Okay, so it's I just a, a it just It just, in my opinion, it would just expedite it and clarify the situations, of course. Like she said, it's there's no this thing that they will not go, not go back on the terms of the prenup. They can always say, you know, I was under pressure, etc., etc. But that happens in any contract. Correct. You see, if yes. signing a contract was it uh, was the end of it all, then we wouldn't have the courts for we it. We won't right? have you all. <laughs> <laughs> this. Pile, yes. I also uh, look. Um, it may open the door for arbitration to come in, and I'm not saying for areas like domestic violence and things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, in a vanilla dispute of just where uh, marital assets are involved and perhaps visitation of children, that part can be sent to arbitrators where Actually, this can be. No, it can't because. Uh, no, I uh -huh. uh, only for the purposes where you what you do in mediation. If that so, part could be sent to the arbitrator, and, and I know what you're going to say that, yeah, exactly, you know, the divorce can't, can't be yeah. granted by the arbitrator. By the arbitrator yeah. For that part, you would still come back. I think back it's an excellent court, suggestion. But you would, this, uh, this uh, you have currently like three, four areas where uh, litigations could open up. But, but for, that, uh, for that, actually mediation is working quite well. A lot of matrimonial, in my experience, a lot of matrimonial cases are going to mediation. But the only thing and to that is mediation is not binding. No, but you see, both once the parties they agree, have to agree one, to no, it. If, both the parties no, that, uh, yeah, okay. But in an arbitration, it will be different. Yeah, because but the arbitrator then will decide. I think it's an I'm excellent on, uh, You know, <coughs> that suggestion. one area of the yes. trial, if that can be sent to the arbitrator, I think it would it would be in the Simplify interest simplified be in the interest of children as exactly. well as opposed to being exposed to a courtroom process. So this exactly. prenup is only for financial assets. Not no, it for, can be. It can it be, but not for custody. custody I mean, because right. you can't. No, I mean, if it is, uh, people can decide to agree on anything, <laughs> right? But whether it's enforceable or not, <laughs> no. that is the question. So uh, where it's in conflict with the child's interest or the child's wishes, then th that will prevail. Yeah. Always. So today, for example, mm. parties may agree not only on assets, they may agree that the mother or the father will have the custody of the children in the event of a divorce. Correct. It may happen at the time of the divorce, it turns out that one of the parents, whoever the, was supposed to have the custody, is not a fit parent. Mm. Suppose, say the husband, he is guilty of domestic violence mm. or something even graver than that or I mean that's grave enough. Uh, what happens then? Just because they have a, a written agreement signed maybe 10, 15, 20, uh, 15 years ago uh, or 10 years ago when children are still minor, let's put it this way. Uh, does it mean that the children will automatically just go to a parent who may not be a fit parent to take care of the children or so should not be given the... Uh, it is organic. And that is, I mean, it, uh, and that is why the, the trigger standard. clauses in our prenup are extremely important. Uh -huh. When something like that happens, both parties sit down and they agree and they change and they amend the prenup. So you move with the changing times. But probably things have already started. So changing the prenup has it's to be done It's not necessarily a, that. I mean, I know trust. a lot of people who get divorced without wanting to kill each other. I mean, <laughs> there is that exists. No, no, no they, do. they do. Yeah. I mean, now because things have moved on and we have to move on with the changing times. Law has to change. It's all the time evolving. You have to change with time. And why I, not? I think one of the ways is, frankly, also the system has to change hmm. to see that we are, you know, the justice delivery system is faster, faster and exactly, uh, easier yeah. on whichever party which is going She's to court. She's absolutely right. You know, right otherwise, frankly, it's a punishment 
to go through the yes, to go and, to court. And by the way, we have great laws on paper. Right? We have great acts. I mean, even the maintenance application, there's time hmm. stipulated for it. Within this much time, the maintenance has to be given. Does it ever happen? So like you rightly said, it's the implementation. It's not that we lack okay, laws and yeah, it's, it's the implementation. A, it's also see reality in the burden on the system. That's that why is true. I'm saying that uh, what is supposed to be only a discussion of assets hmm. children get dragged in because if you don't pay me i won't allow true. you to see the kid yeah that is something so that the wife that, will uh, hold uh, over uh, the if whichever, no, whichever, whichever the husband, parent you know the so the children get dragged in and I'm, my point is only if the marital assets issue can go to an arbitrator hmm. a lot will get fixed this delay in the system would and that, but and for that we because need because I practice arbitration. <laughs> but for that, but for that we, we need a prenup. Yes, 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 you need a prenup for that. So I think the panel is more or less in favour of a prenup. Is just the technicalities, uh, you know, um, I, and a lot of caution. Uh, I would say, uh, in in our Indian context, definitely a lot of caution must be exercised, hmm. and we must be careful that these are not used actually to you the know detriment. overcome. Uh, the rights which are available today in the court in in legal law system. legally to uh, to women those rights should not be because by taken away by prenups okay. i think if there's a start uh, the system will mature people will sure. you know start i mean because a lot of the clauses will come into the public domain hmm. so and the they definitely will should also. be yeah of and course the judgments, judgments will evolve and it'll get but we must make a start. We must make a start and why not from this show, from this discussion. <laughs> Thank you all for this conversation Thank and uh, let's hope the legal system is listening to us. Mm -hmm. On that note, thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank, thank you. thank you. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.